Hey everyone, welcome to the podcast today. I'm here uh, in studio with Dr. Andy Woods. Welcome, Mondo. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, for those listening, we're going to be we're going to be talking about an interesting topic, uh, and and I'm sure you've seen this. I know you reported on it, Andy, in, in the sense of they're coming this fall, September 18th and 19th, that the UN is having this summit, which is a a summit kind of re-engaging the nations that are trying to re-engage the nations going back to the 2015 Paris, Acclim- Paris uh, climate agreement mm-hmm. where an article came out on June 13th. So let me, I'll just read this, this first paragraph to set the stage. The title is, this is from the UN.org. So this is straight from the, the, the horse's mouth, so to speak. The title is, uh, we need seven years of accelerated transformative action to achieve the SDGs or sustain, sustainable development goals. And it's dated June 13th. And it says almost eight years have passed since the international community agreed to take bold and transformative steps to achieve the 2030 agenda for sustain, sustainable development, a plan of action to secure the rights and well-being of everyone on a healthy, thriving planet. Today at the halfway point to 2030, that promise is in peril and a fundamental shift is needed in commitment, solidarity, financing, and action to put the world on a better path, and it is needed now. So for those that maybe they're hearing about this for the first time, what in the world are they talking about here? Well, it's it's interesting because it shows you these one-worlders thinking, or at least thinking in seven-year increments, and we know from Daniel 9.27 that one, whether this is that, we don't know yet, but there is coming a seven-year treaty, uh, in this case, between the Antichrist and unbelieving Israel. So they're thinking in seven-year increments. It's just in this case, it's a little different. They're sort of, it looks to me like they're making a pact with all of the nations to kind of bring in these, uh, what are they called, S. SDGs, yes. Sustainable Development Goals. And so there's uh, some interesting parallels with Bible prophecy. See, I think that's that's what I see is uh, one of the reasons I wanted to address this is, is uh, you have you have this agreement from, again, from 2015. So even there, they, were, they weren't thinking in seven years. They were thinking in 15-year increments. Mm-hmm. It just happens to be that with COVID ho- happening over the past few years, they've seen some some increases, some speed up, and they're realizing, man, we need to take advantage. You hear some of them. We need to take advantage of, of what we've had here uh, as it relates to some of the fear mongering and, and the, the crises. It's always a crisis, right? So they're, 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 they are regrouping, and it just happens to be right now in, two, in 2023. But I think for those that are prophecy watchers, all of us are, that when we see the UN say anything with a seven-year time frame, it, it brings up the hair is on her head. I mean, doesn't it? Shouldn't it? I mean, why not? Mm-hmm. Well, well, sure. I mean, Bible prophecy predicts a one world government um, head, head, headed by an antichrist. And apparently at some point he's going to enter into a peace treaty with uh, the nation of Israel, guaranteeing her, guaranteeing her security. So today when we talk about globalists or one worlders, um, you know, that's what these SDGs are. They're wanting to bring all 17 of these things into existence through the solution. And I put that in quotes <laughs> right through the solution of one world government. When the, the big guns talk about seven year treaties, we say, well, that's a very interesting similarity with what I know is coming in Bible prophecy. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that I would like to do is, is to compare what we're seeing with this article uh, again, June 13th, and uh, their connection with what they're hoping to accomplish, and then try to take what they're saying here, uh, and then to see if what is happening there matches what we see in Daniel nine twenty seven, and whether I mean this isn't an official the, the Paris Climate Agreement again that started in in, in twenty in twenty fifteen. So some of the goals that they have here, it says in their report. Uh, of the roughly 140 targets with data, mm-hmm. only about 12% are on track to be achieved by 2030. Close to half, though showing progress, are moderately or severely off track. And some 30% have either seen no movement or regressed below the 2015 baseline. Giving up on the sustainable development goals or extending the deadline, presumably past 2030, to meet them is not an option. 
The world has been rocked by a series of interleaked crises, the COVID-19 pandemic, conflict, the climate crisis, and a weak global economy. Recommitting to the 2030 agenda is the best roadmap out of these crises, but we are fast running out of time to correct course. So this, uh, it reminds me of Rahm Emanuel, you yeah. know, <laughs> right? Never let a crisis go to waste. Exactly. They, they have these ideas. We don't know anybody's heart. We, I don't read hearts. Uh, I'm sure there might be some that mean well, but we do know that the world lies under the power of the wicked one. Mm -hmm. So tell, tell me kind of your thoughts here, you know, in, in the sense of th th this, this re-engagement, you know, using recommitment. Well, to be frank with you, if I was not a, a Bible student mm -hmm. and a, a Bible prophecy uh, uh, advocate, and I didn't know anything about Bible prophecy, to me what they say makes sense. I mm -hmm. mean, it does make sense that we should have – let's just leave the Bible out of it for a second. Just from a humanistic perspective, world government makes sense to the human mind because – we have all of these potential nuclear weapons around the world. Why not just isolate them and put them in one person's hands and we've saved our planet? The problem is <laughs> the Bible tells us at the Tower of Babel and it tells us concerning the prophecies about the Antichrist, the end of the age, that if you get world government and it falls into the wrong person's hands, as God said in the book of Genesis chapter 11, nothing will be impossible for them. And there he's talking about the potential for evil. So as a biblicist, when I see the powers that be grabbing the strings of global government, um, I'm saying that's not good, number one, because eventually this, this centralized power prophetically is going to fall into the wrong person's hands. And number two, this is certainly stage setting for the things that are on the horizon concerning Bible prophecy. I don't think prophecies are such that they're fulfilled in a vacuum. If you just go back to the first coming prophecies, the stage was all set for those first coming prophecies. And if the stage can be set for the first advent of Jesus, why can't I see it being set for the second advent of Jesus? And so when I see these interesting similarities, that's how I categorize it. I categorize it as stage setting, you know, ultimately uh, concerning what's to come because the stage has to be set well in advance, you know, for the fulfillment of God's prophetic word. That's what I think is happening in our world. Yeah, I mean, the uh, I, I like to say that we don't go from living in Mayberry one day to the full Antichrist <laughs> system right. the next, <laughs> right. right? I mean, it takes in here in many ways. If you if you put Mayberry back in the fifties, just you know whatever, it, it's uh, it's taken it it takes a couple generations of stage setting. Mm -hmm. And if you, it, you like you like what you just said is is great. Going back to the first century, I think God began the stage setting of the messianic era of the first. Going with Alexander the Great, the, the Hellenization, right? I mean, we, we have Greek getting, God established it 300 years so that when the time when the gospel did go out, it'd be easy to go out. And even Rome coming in yes. and the census and everything. I mean, these are world powers and God's like, yeah, I'm stage setting this because my son's coming. Yeah, right down to the piercing mm -hmm. because uh, Zechariah 12, 10, Isaiah 53, verse 5, Psalm 22, verse 16, I'll say his hands and yep. he'll be pierced. The psalmist is more clear that his hands and feet will be pierced. Well, the Jews didn't pierce people. They didn't crucify people. They, they executed them through stoning. So Rome uh, under Pompeii, about what, 63 BC, coming into the land of Israel, taking away from the Jews the, the right to execute their own criminals and popularizing what the Assyrians had invented, the crucifixion. Mm -hmm. As all of that comes into place, that's the Lord moving his hand in preparation for the piercing of his son. So if something like that can happen for the first advent, clearly we're seeing this kind of thing preparatory for the second advent. Especially because when we look, uh, I, I tend to think, and oftentimes we see, there's a difference between, the I, I think, a prophecy which prophecy often is a snapshot. Mm -hmm. Boom, Revelation 13, there's a snapshot of this global government that has in, uh, um, instituted a mark of the beast. And you're like, okay, and then it, and then it steps away. But you're like, well, how did it get there? Mm -hmm. Again, it just didn't happen overnight. So now you have generations, even going back to, you know, 1947 mm -hmm. with, or even the, the, 
the establishment of the United Nations itself, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, moving from the League of Nations. I mean, that was a long, that's pre, even before Israel. Yeah. So you have that idea of, of needing or precipitating a world government yeah. going way back. And I think the mistake that a lot of our camp makes that are very enthusiastic about prophecy, and we should be enthusiastic mm -hmm. about Bible prophecy, but they, the mistake we make is we say this is that. In other words, we confuse stage setting with an actual fulfillment. And that's where we start saying things like, well, this coming UN conference is the peace treaty with Israel. We don't know that yet. And therefore, the rapture has to happen at a particular point to precede these seven years. Well, we don't know that yet either. I mean, we and we don't know how long the stage setting is going to happen, you know, before we move into specific fulfillment. So I think we're confusing a lot of times stage setting with fulfillment. Especially, in, in, again, the motive the motive is, hey, I hear, I hear, I'm excited. Sure. <laughs> I'm excited. So yeah. to see the stage setting is really exciting. But then, you know, some people are, are they're very careful, which is, is very wise to say, well, I'm not saying that the rapture is going to be between now and then, or that is, like you said, that is. But nevertheless, sometimes there's a high level of implying it. Yes. And which leads people to, uh, let's talk about that for a moment. Uh, some people are like, well, I never said it was the exact fulfillment. But there's a strong level of implication, and then so people get excited, and maybe I think we, we need to. We maybe we, let's ask that question. I mean, you're a pastor, you know. I, I pastor a long time. We look out for the different levels of people in the church, different levels of maturity, spiritual understanding, all the different. And, and as a shepherd, you, you sometimes you have to bring it down to the to the to the to the least common denominator. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a there's levels of maturity there. So if we if we say something that potentially could be careless, they're going to run with, well, so-and-so said or implied, we might have a way out and say, oh, I didn't say that. You go, But they left yeah. with the, the flavor that, man, September 18th, that's the covenant. That's, that is the covenant of Daniel 9, 27. And then September 25th comes and yeah. October 5th comes, and then it leaves them with what? Well, if we're, if we're not distinguishing like we are here between fulfillment and stage setting, and we're giving people the impression that the prophecies have to be fulfilled at a specific time and start attaching dates, or as you say, leaning towards mm -hmm. certain dates, giving ourselves a little wiggle room. I love what you said. What are we what are we doing for the immature believers in the church? I mean, we're really setting them up for disappointment and disillusionment. It's it's a lot like the pro-life movement when a pro-lifer goes off the rails and and shoots um, doctor a doctor or yeah. an abortionist. What does that do to the pro-life movement? It sets it back, I would think, a couple of decades. That's what we do when we don't <laughs> distinguish stage setting from actual fulfillment. We take our whole dispensational eschatological uh, uh, group and we just lose credibility not only in the eyes of Christendom, but in the eyes of the unbelieving world. Yeah. 